Headed into the 2024 season, the Seattle Mariners offensive lineup will look much different than it did in 2023. There will be some familiar faces, but mainly new ones. As a matter of fact, when the lineup is submitted opening day against the Red Sox in T-Mobile Park, less than half of the offensive lineup, just 4 out of the 9, were written into the lineup on opening day 2023. After the Mariners narrowly missed the playoffs in 2023, just a year after breaking their 21-year playoff drought, it was clear that change was needed. For a majority of the year, the Mariners were in the bottom third of offensive production throughout baseball. They had the second most strikeouts in all of the league. There were three people in baseball last year that had over 200 strikeouts. Two of them were Eugenio Suarez and Teoscar Hernandez. And the three everyday players for the Mariners that had a strikeout rate above 30%, also the three main guys the Mariners decided to move on from, were Teoscar Hernandez, Jared Kelnick, and Eugenio Suarez. Very effective. It took a historic hot stretch from Julio, as well as the rest of the team to even have a shot at the playoffs. The ceiling was clearly there, but the floor of the offense couldn't be held up even by one of the best pitching staffs in baseball. The offseason got off to a fantastic start, followed by the news that Xfinity was moving Root Sports up to their top tier package. With this and everything else going on, the Mariners' ownership saw a decline in revenue in the near future, so it was clear to see that they would not be greenlighting any big-name free agent acquisitions this offseason. However, if you've been following the Mariners since the rebuild started under Jerry Depoto in about 2019, then you know to have patience in the offseason. Hold up, let Jerry cook. Equipped with a top ramen budget but a seafood fettuccine appetite, DePoto and the Mariners front office began their offseason by selling assets in Eugenio Suarez as well as Jared Kelnick. Basically, the entire month of December 2023 was an unfortunate time to be a Mariners fan. Your team had just missed out of the playoffs by one game, the roster was being turned over for salary dumps, and at this point you don't know what's going on. And then things started moving the other way. They signed DH Mitch Garver, they trade Robbie Ray for Mitch Hanniger, they trade Jose Caballero for Luke Rayley, and then they trade for Jorge Polanco and Gregory Santos? Now, now we're cooking. While their thoroughbred staff of pitchers will remain their strength on paper, this lineup 1-9 through nine, gives the Mariners the best opportunity to win day in and day out compared to the prior few years. So with that being said, let's take a look at the Mariners 2024 offensive lineup. But before we do, if you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe to the Couch GM to stay up to date on all things Mariners and baseball. And if you or someone you know is thinking of buying, selling, or refinancing, reach out to myself, the Couch GM, or visit LenderConnorWeb.com to hit a home run with your mortgage financing needs. Now back to my ideal opening day lineup for the Mariners. We'll go through each of these players and why they're slotted where they are, but leading off playing shortstop is JP Crawford. Batting second is of course center fielder Julio Rodriguez. Batting third playing second is Jorge Polanco. At cleanup is the new DH Mitch Garver. Batting fifth in my opinion should be left fielder Luke Rayleigh. Followed by the switch hitting big dumper playing catcher Cal Raleigh. Ty France batting 7th at 1st base, the right field platoon in Mitch Hanniger and Dominic Canzone batting 8th, and then the 3rd base platoon of Luis Arias, Josh Rojas, and the newly acquired Brian Anderson. Starting off with JP Crawford, JP in 2023 was the surprise of the Mariners. He worked out at driveline baseball the prior offseason and clearly took something to heart, as his stats year over year had an insane jump. He tied Julio Rodriguez for the team lead in OPS on base plus slugging with an 818 OPS. He more than tripled the amount of home runs that he hit the prior year, hitting 19 home runs after the year before hitting just 6. He was able to increase his power numbers largely because he got into his pull side a lot more. His pull percentage went from 27.2% up to 38.4 and his oppo percentage went from 19.3 down to 15%. Crush to right. Crawford's having a career year with power. And while increasing his power numbers by a substantial amount, he also increased his walk percentage by over 3%. He ended up leading the entire American League in walks with 94. He led the team in on-base percentage with a 380 on-base. 
and even received some MVP votes. And in all reality, if he falls somewhere between his 2022 and 23 production numbers, then the Mariners' top half of the lineup will be set up pretty well. And a quick tangent, but did you know that J.P. Crawford's first career home run in the major leagues came off of Luis Castillo? Wild. Batting second, of course, is the face of the franchise in Julio Rodriguez. Julio technically regressed in his sophomore year, but it was nowhere near a sophomore slump. His OPS dropped a few points year over year. His chase numbers, strikeout percentage, and walk percentage weren't the best, but he still was able to place fourth in MVP voting, be elected to his second All-Star game, and win his second Silver Slugger. And now, with two consecutive years of top 10 in MVP voting, he just increased that potential club option in 2030 from a $200 million contract to $240 million. And as I mentioned earlier in this video, Julio was one of the main reasons why the Mariners even had a shot at the playoffs this year. If you've seen my Hot Julio Summer video, then you know some of these stats already. In the month of August, Julio batted over 420, led all qualified American League players in hits, doubles, RBIs, stolen bases, batting average, on-base percentage, slugging percentage, OPS, and total bases. He also recorded 13 multi-hit games and 6 games with 3 plus hits during that month. He even set some MLB and franchise records including 17 hits over a 4 game span. Obviously, he crushes the ball. He was in the 95th percentile in average exit velocity and hard hit percentage. Add on top of that his sprint speed, his range, and his arm strength at center field. When Julio is locked in, he might be the best player in baseball. Or at least, that's clearly his ceiling. And Julio has talked about it so far this spring training. He's been starting to tighten his circle. There was a lot of eyes on him last year. A lot of people pulling him in different directions. If he can maintain his focus throughout the season in 2024, then Julio will take that next step. Batting third is switch hitting second baseman Jorge Polanco. There's no hiding that second base has been a black hole for the Mariners for years. Making the move to go out and get Jorge Polanco this offseason was a truly impactful move and it guarantees two years of a quality second baseman. Over his 10 year career, he's averaged a 111 OPS plus, meaning his bat over the long term has been 11% above league average. Over the past three years, he's had an OPS plus of 125, 115, and 115. Here's his baseball savant page from 2023. He was up there in expected slug, barrel percentage, and sweet spot percentage. He was limited to playing in 80 games this year due to a couple injuries with his lower half. But Polanco this spring looks fully healthy and let's be honest, the dude is jacked. Add to it the fact that he is a switch hitter with even splits from both sides of the plate. And Scott Service along with us couch GMs will have a great time riding him into the lineup every day of the week in real life and on MLB The Show. From both sides of the plate, he's a career 269 hitter with a little higher on-base percentage and slugging percentage from the left side of the plate. JP, Julio, and Polanco are a fantastic one through three. Batting cleanup for the Mariners is DH Mitch Garver. Garver signed with the Mariners on Christmas Eve to the longest and most lucrative free agent hitter contract during the DePoto era, a whopping two-year $24 million contract. Would you believe me if I told you Mitch Garver was the best fastball hitter in all of baseball since the beginning of the 2019 season? Well, based on his weighted on-base average, that's just a fact. And here's his baseball savant numbers from 2023. Again, that Woba is up there. His expected slugging is high. He's got a solid barrel percentage and his specialty is working the at-bat and waiting for his pitch. He was in the 98th percentile in chase rate and the 90th percentile in walk percentage. Keeping him healthy by staying with him at DH will be key this year, as really all of his injuries in the past have been because he was a catcher. He's gonna clean up a lot of runners on base this year. And if you wanna learn about Mitch's background, his playing history up to this point, his injury history, then go check out my player profile on Mitch Garver. If I'm writing the lineup, then batting fifth is outfielder Luke Rayleigh. Why would I put Luke Rayleigh here instead of Cal Raleigh? Well, in short, he has the higher upside at the plate. In 2023, Luke Rayleigh was one of just 10 players in all of baseball with a sprint speed and a barrel percentage in the 80th percentile or higher. 
Other names on this list are Mike Trout, Luis Robert Jr., Matt Chapman, Byron Buxton, and Teoscar Hernandez. To those of you who play fantasy baseball, you're welcome. I think Luke Rayleigh is going to have a standout year this year for the Mariners. And to have a guy like Luke Rayleigh that can run and hit the ball hard just keeps things rolling in the lineup. He does have swing and miss in his game, but as he's talked about in interviews up to this point, the more consistent at bats he can get, which the Rays started to do, the better he's shown that he can be. For a full breakdown on Luke Rayleigh, who he is and how he got to this point, make sure to go check out his player profile as well. Then we get to the big dumper in Cal Raleigh batting 6th. Cal certainly has his clutch moments with a bat in his hand, but his biggest strengths are behind the plate. As you can see, his overall fielding value is in the 85th percentile. He's done a great job at throwing out runners as well as framing pitches. And then clearly his strength at the plate is his power. He's got a solid barrel percentage and sweet spot percentage. His career batting average up to this point is 217. And in 2023, he batted 232. And in my thought process, ahead of Cal Raleigh, you want a guy that can move on the base so that there's runners on base for when he does damage. They can draw a lot of positives from that. Absolutely scolded. Not coming back, Cal Raleigh. Batting seventh is the bounce back candidate in first baseman Ty France. Ty saw a significant drop in production from 2022 to 2023. It all started when he got injured at first base in Oakland in 2022, but up to that level at every point, Ty France has been able to hit. Over the three seasons from 2020 through 2022, year in and year out, he's been around a 30% better than average hitter. And then this last year, he was just at league average. He saw the work that JP put in at driveline the prior offseason, and he himself this offseason has been training at driveline. Coming into spring training this year, Ty France is running faster than he ever has on the base path, and he stated that cleaning up his mechanics resulted in him adding almost three and a half miles per hour of bat speed. So th this isn't even a matter of like getting him back to where he once was. This is we can take your game to a different level that you've never been at before. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I think some of the things you will be able to see is he, he should hit for a little bit more power. His battle ball quality should improve a lot. And to have a confident, fully healthy Ty France batting seventh in your lineup is more so a testament to the true depth of the lineup than to the production of Ty France. At the end of the day, his down year was league average. Then batting eighth, you have the right field platoon in Mitch Hanniger and Dominic Canzone. I think Dominic Canzone will get a majority of the playing time. He was a very under the radar pickup in that Paul Seawald trade last year. At every level, he has shown that he's been able to hit. In college at Ohio State, he batted 336 with a 928 OPS. Throughout four years in the minor leagues, he batted 310 with a 933 OPS. And then last year, DePoto saw Canzone get base hits off of Brian Wu and Andres Munoz, and he decided he'd seen enough. Canzone has plus contact and average upside, and oh by the way, he's got light tower power. Off the hit it here cafe. His scouting report also shows that he doesn't strike out all that much at just 17.6% last year, and he has a quality arm in the outfield averaging 91 miles an hour. Pair that with a veteran in Mitch Hanniger, and you have yourself a quality combination. Again with Mitch Hanniger, it's all about keeping him healthy and on the field. He might get some starts against lefties on the mound, but realistically I think he'll be more of a late inning addition. Being able to put in a clutch guy like Mitch Hanniger in the late innings whenever you need him is a great tool to have in your tool belt. And you gotta love it when you see Mitch Hanniger homering in his first spring AB of the year. Rounding out the starting nine with the wild card, which is the third base position. There's going to be some combination of Luis Arias, Josh Rojas, and potentially Brian Anderson working the hot corner. What to expect from them? Well, really all you can ask for is them making plays in the field, bats somewhere around league average, and provide that buffer for either Tyler Locklear or Cole Young to come up and play third base later in the year. Leading things off, Cole Young with a swing and a drive deep to right field. Holy smokes, he leaned into this one and goodbye baseball. Uh, I think people will be stunned when they see Tyler Locklear and his, his all-around ability. It's not just thump. He can hit. He's got an approach. He plays good defense. He can throw. You know, he, he is physical and, and looks like a, a future middle-of-the-order bat for us. Cole Young is just as advertised. You know, it's it's contact, it's baseball feel. He's got a lot of baseball IQ, and he's growing into his strength mm -hmm. in such a way that the contact 
skill is going to translate to some power. Until those two guys make their debuts, the rest of the bench will be filled out by Dylan Moore, Sebi Zavala, and Sam Haggerty. With this starting nine, along with the best pitching staff in baseball, I think it's absolutely realistic for the Mariners to win 90 plus games this year. And shoot, take the division while they're at it. Thank you for watching. Make sure to let me know your thoughts and comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this, and we'll see you next time.